Retired Navy Captain Brent Sadler, former Pentagon official, now a senior fellow at the Heritage Foundation, uh, joins me now. Um, this is a tricky situation. It's a four-day ceasefire. Essentially, this means they can get humanitarian aid. They can get 50 hostages released. Here's the concern, obviously. You give Hamas an opportunity to rearm themselves. And what happens to the other 200 hostages? There were 240 hostages total. They're only getting 50 as a release. Israel is only getting 50 hostages released. Meantime, uh, the Palestinians are expecting 150 prisoners in exchange. Does this seem like a fair and smart deal to you? Well, I, I can't really say if it's fair. It certainly doesn't seem like it for soul to soul because uh, the odd, the number of Israelis that are being released and maybe even three Americans, uh, it's basically a three to one kind of ratio. Mm -hmm. So fair, maybe not. Smart also, I think, is questionable. There's a history uh, and there's a tactic behind Hamas taking hostages. This was their intent on October 7th when they went in uh, to take hostages so that they could then slowly release them and try and force the, the Israeli public and even the American public to slow down or to halt Israel's offensive that they anticipated. Uh, it's certainly been a lot more effective to date, but the, the end objective still must remain the same, the destruction of Hamas in Gaza. Uh, Qatar's prime minister and top diplomat said that he hoped the deal would eventually lead to a permanent ceasefire and, mm. quote, serious talks on resolving the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. That seems to be overly optimistic. Would you agree? Uh, very optimistic, and, and, and it also ignores the fact that Hamas, by intentionally going into Israel on 7 October and taking hostages, committed a war crime. And it'd be interesting to see if the world actually looks to try to hold Hamas to account either in the International Criminal Court or other venues. But that is a war crime, clear and plain and simple, and it can't be rewarded with a lasting ceasefire that leaves Hamas in place. No, and there should be no reward whatsoever. First of all, the Palestinians, Gaza, and Hamas right now, they're not doing Israelis any favor. Uh, and, and, and by releasing these hostages, let's just say most of them, if not all, have been tortured. Uh, many of their family members have been tortured to death in Gaza. God mm -hmm. only knows how many hostages there really are. There were 240, and already there have been multiple that have been found dead. The Wall Street Journal's editorial board uh, writes this on the Israel-Hamas hostage deal. Innocents will be freed, but the terrorists get a chance to regroup. <laughs> Quote, the deal, again, shows the moral gulf between the two sides. Even as Israelis rejoice for the women and children who will return home, they know Hamas is rejoicing too. Its war crimes have been rewarded. It will steal fuel from its own people to power its terror tunnels. Its shattered northern Gaza brigades will use the ceasefire to regroup, escape from weak positions and set more ambushes for Israeli troops. Israel's leaders made this deal knowing that their soldiers will pay for it. Your thoughts? Well, I think uh, this war has to be fought to its conclusion and the destruction of Hamas and the notion that there can no, be no Israel. Hamas is, is obligated and committed to the destruction of Israel. That needs to change and needs to be put aside for, for, for final uh, in the conclusion of this war. If, if anything less than that, uh, we're going to be seeing this and confronted with Americans at risk and killing and hostage taking continuing into the future. Right. I want to turn to the widening threat in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Iran proxies attacking U.S. troops in Iraq and Syria 66 times in just over one month. Pentagon officials are saying the latest was a ballistic missile attack on Al-Assad Air Base in Iraq. Eight of our American mm -hmm. troops were injured in that one. The U.S. military hitting back. Only its fourth retaliatory strike after a dozen of U.S. military members have been wounded. This round included an immediate self-defense strike and another that targeted two facilities in Iraq. Now, this marks the first time uh, that the U.S. has carried out an airstrike in Iraq since President Trump ordered the one that killed uh, Iranian General Soleimani back in 2020. The three previous U.S. strikes hit targets in Syria and the national security spokesman sounding the alarm on the Iran threat and the nation's close ties to another top U.S. adversary. Watch this. Iran is seeking to purchase additional military equipment from Russia, including attack helicopters, radars, and uh, combat trainer aircraft. In total, Iran is seeking billions of dollars worth of military equipment from Russia to strengthen its military capabilities. 
Russia has also been helping Iran develop and maintain its satellite collection capabilities and other space-based programs. Yet again, Iran is financing and is behind more than one war here. Obviously, it's been fueling the war behind Russia, and now it's fueling the enemy against Israel mm -hmm. and the U.S. When, when our targets, our, our U.S. military, doesn't seem to be fighting back full force, are we appearing to be weak in the eyes of Iran? And should this administration be taking a stronger stance? Oh, without a doubt, uh, the United States appears weak for the last two years. I mean, these attacks have been going on without an, an effective response. And I think General Keene earlier was on programs at Fox News. He had also, I, I echo his statement that this is too little. These are still little pinpricks for every one of these attacks. And they have yet to really go after the command and control of these Iranian proxies in Iraq and Syria. And until they do that, it's just gonna continue. And we've been lucky that we have not seen more casualties on the US side. As far as uh, Admiral Kirby's comments about Iran buying Russian equipment, troubling it, it's definitely troubling. Yeah. But for the Iranians, I wouldn't hold your breath that you're actually going to get those deliveries anytime soon as Russia struggles to fight in Ukraine. Brent Sadler, thank you very much for your expertise. We really do appreciate you coming on. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Uh, you too as well. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.